Well, my friends, we are starting here in Dallas, right in front of Dealey Plaza at the old Red Museum, the old courthouse. There's a museum inside I want to check out with some kind of interesting artifacts. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, let's go on in. It's $8 admission. Welcome to the old Red. It's a cool old building, I'll say that. All right, this looks like this is one of the rooms I wanted to check out. 1946 to 2007. All right here, they're showing in Texas history. Mary Kay Cosmetics. The original product line by Mary Kay. And right here, that is the Mary Kay Pink Cadillac. It says 1969 when Mary Kay introduced the Pink Cadillac. It has been given as a trophy on wheels to top sales personnel. So this is kind of interesting what this is. It's called Mariano's Maggie Rita. This was the very first frozen margarita machine. You can see right there, it even says that. <laughs> Symbolizing Neiman Marcus. To promote his store in Dallas Worldwide, Stanley Marcus initiated Neiman Marcus's Fortnite. For two weeks each year, beginning in 1957, the store celebrated a different country by showing wares, art, and cuisine. This was the 1962 Asian Fortnite. And we've got Frito-Lay and the Frito-Lay mug. Now right here we have a display case for the Super Bowl. And right here on the helmet, one signature I can see for sure is coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy Johnson. Right there. There's Emmett. Now this art is actually a costume design by costume designer Wynn Morton from 1947. So this case is kind of cool because you have a Heisman Trophy Award for Doak Walker Jr. right there. But then up here you have Tom Landry signed fedora. It says, his fedora quickly became a trademark for Cowboys head coach Tom Landry as he paced the sidelines during games. <laughs> Under his leadership, the Cowboys became famous as America's team, won the 1972 and 1978 Super Bowls. And then that's Mike Madonna's jersey from the Dallas Stars. They moved from Minnesota to Dallas, and they won Hockey Stanley Cup in 1999. And here's a ticket for the old Dallas Rangers baseball team. Now this hat belonged to a local television personality named Mr. Peppermint. So. If you know Mr. Peppermint, that's his straw boater. It says he was wearing a striped jacket and straw boater and carrying a candy cane. Jerry Haynes, for more than 35 years, endeared himself to a generation of children as Mr. Peppermint on WFAA TV. And you can't think Dallas without thinking the show Dallas. That's JR's hat. You can see right there, of course, he would have worn multiple hats, but it says Larry Hagman embodied the stereotype of the ruthless Texas oil man, J.R. Ewing, in Dallas. Stetson made this beaver cowboy hat especially for Hagman to wear in his series. Now they're concentrating here on movies that were filmed here, and it says that 1962 remake of State Fair moved the setting from Iowa to Texas and brought teen idols Ann Margaret, Bobby Darren, and Pat Boone to Dallas for filming at the fairgrounds. This is kind of cool. If, I, if you know who Joe Bob Briggs is, I used to see him on a uh, on a news show where he would do his little spiel, but this says, World Drive-In Movie Festival. In 1982, the Dallas Times-Herald began printing grapevine native Joe Bob Briggs movie reviews. Joe Bob Goes to the Drive-In, which was soon syndicated in 50 newspapers. Briggs later hosted Joe Bob's Drive-In Theater on the movie channel. Oh, I never knew this. It says, Although supposedly set in Detroit, many scenes for the action film RoboCop were filmed in Dallas during August and September of 1986, including City Hall, The West End, and Sons of Herman Hall. And apparently several scenes from Tom Cruise, Born on the Fourth of July, was filmed on the campus of SMU University and Pleasant Grove in Oak Cliff. And then here they're mentioning that Jane Mansfield, Highland Park High School student, there's a... Uh, Mentioning Boss Skaggs, graduate of St. Mark's School of Dallas, 
performed with Steve Miller Band before launching a solo career as a successful blues rock singer and songwriter. And then the acoustic guitar belonged to Trini Lopez. Mexican immigrant Trini Lopez attended Crozier Tech High School in Dallas, but dropped out in the 11th grade. He was making good money as a local musician. That's kind of interesting. It's an old costume opera gown. It's from the Dallas Opera's rendition of Ida. And even though it's hard to read, it says this telegram states that the founders of the Dallas Theater scored an architectural coup by hiring Frank Lloyd Wright to design their new facility. Wright's only theater opened on the banks of the Turtle Creek in 1959. Former cowboy and Dallas resident was one of the first American composers to collect and transcribe folk tunes. He became famous for his arrangement of Home on the Range. Then right here this says, this set of handcuffs owned by Dallas police detective L.D. Montgomery was on Lee Harvey Oswald, securing his hands in front of his body when shot by Jack Ruby on November 24th, 1963. And then up there, that crazy looking artwork. And up here, that is Jack Ruby's doodle. <laughs> it says, Jack Ruby spent his final years in a three room cell in the Dallas County Criminal Courts Building. He inscribed this doodle to one of his jailers. So the paper to the left is acknowledging that they've been selected to hold the uh, Kennedy Dinner, the Dallas Trademark. And then next to it is, since they never ended up having it, this was the unused table setting. Reverend T.D. Jakes, within five years of moving his ministry, the Potter's House, from West Virginia to Dallas in 1996, Reverend T.D. Jakes, whom time called America's best preacher, increased his membership by 28,000. So they're saying that this video camera here was used in 2000 by David Leeson as one of the correspondents that was chosen to um, do videotape for the newspapers on a full-time basis during the Iraq War. And then this was his Nikon camera which still has sand and dirt in it and the helmet that he wore while covering those. So this is really interesting. This is documenting that the Frankfurt sisters here pictured created the first line of maternity clothing. And that would be one of the very first maternity outfits. The company was called Page Boy, and they said that Elizabeth Taylor, Florence Henderson, and Loretta Young were pictured wearing their clothes and supporting them. All right, let's see what else we have in here. I'm looking for a couple of things in particular, and I found almost all but one. So this is actually a wasp beret. This was a uh, group that the military had called the Women's Air Force Service Pilot Program. Penny Savings Bank. It says, black businessmen formed the Penny Savings Bank in 1917 as a vehicle for African Americans to save money while supporting the economic independence of their own community. Then here they have a KKK uniform stating that there was a case against the KKK in 1922. It says, um, former Texas Lieutenant Governor headed the Dallas County Citizens League, which denounced the Klan, but nearly 6,000 new Klansmen enrolled in Dallas in the next few months. This robe is marked Scene Bearer on the inside, perhaps a reference to the position held by the owner. Now in this case, we have some famous guns. So here we have Clyde Barrow's gun of Bonnie and Clyde. It says this gun attributed to Clyde Barrow came to the possession of George Henry Brooks, Sheriff of Bowie County, from 1928 to 1940, the Barrow Gang staged several bank robberies in this area. This is Skylar Marshall. It says Dallas County's first college educated sheriff, Skylar Marshall Jr., gained wide respect by thwarting a 1925 mob determined to lynch two black prisoners being held in the criminal courts building. And then it says these are the guns that he brandished during the 1925 mob. And then these handcuffs were used during his time as sheriff for uh, bootleggers. 
This is kind of cool. It says this is called the Dallasite, a short-lived, ambitious magazine patterned after the New Yorker. It was edited by Horace McCoy, a former soldier, screenwriter, and novelist best known for They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Pretty good movie. They've got Spanky McFarlane, Spanky's Pants, <laughs> from The Little Rascals. How cool is that? 1931, three-year-old Dallas native George Spanky McFarlane became a star in Hal Roach's Our Gang comedies. When this film career ended in 1944, McFarlane returned to finish high school in Lancaster. That's pretty cool. The Electric Toaster. Advances in electric generation and wiring provided Dallas families with the opportunity to equip their homes with electrical appliances. Westinghouse Toaster was among the irons, vacuum cleaners, and coffee pots that modernized life in the 1920s. So this was a new style of dress called the wrap dress during the Jazz Age. Well, I think that's gonna do it for us. The Old Red Museum, pretty great collection. Yeah, this was a pretty cool place. I really wanted to see Tom Landry's hat. I wanted to see Clyde Barrow's gun, Spanky's pants, and we saw a whole lot more. It's pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, look at this as we're leaving. They have an treasures from the collection, and I noticed that over here they have the early Barbie and Ken dolls. Their parents modeled this after them, and they were both students at Hollywood High School. Well, I mentioned this museum was right across from something. Let's check it out while we're here. There's a statue for George Dealey, Dealey Plaza. Nice. Look at all the flowers. So my friend Breck here just did a monstrous two vlog series on John F. Kennedy assassination. I probably will never vlog it. So this is probably gonna, is gonna be as close as we get. We're gonna check out the grassy knoll and the book depository and the X where he was shot. And here's a plaque telling what happened that day. 12.30 p.m. 1963. If you look from here even, it's a different view than you're probably used to, but you see that green X out there on the road. That's where it happened. That's where his car was struck. And then you can see the famous grassy knoll right over here. And of course, a lot of theories were that there was someone over here shooting. There are theories that there were multiple people shooting. Here's the book depository. So as we walk along here, you can see there's actually two X's. There's one right here, and then one down here. Who can forget that image of Jackie? Well, they say that she was trying to crawl out originally, and then they say, some people say that she was trying to grab part of President Kennedy's skull. It would have been traveling down right through here. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. We'll see you all again next time. From Dallas, Texas, goodbye.